thinking and producing and leading in ex by example and establishing a balanced society between neighbors, this, this is what is important. You don't have to look very far to see that most of the problems facing us today are man-made and therefore the need for a mirror that will accurately represent our own human nature, to hold the mirror up to our human nature, that need has never been greater. The mission of the Club of Budapest, which is planetary consciousness, basically dealing with the essential reality of the unity of all human beings, uh, agrees very much with my own personal philosophy. They do aim to create a world which, be, which will be worthwhile living for everybody. And for this reason, I can say that I'm a member of the club. I really hope that through the club, uh, people would inspire each other and give each other s more strength, maybe, to influence our situation in every field around the world. Responsibility is to keep your eyes, ears, nose, mouth open uh, in order to react to everything you see because these are times in which one has to guess what the future is going to be. Uh, the uh, Club of Budapest is a club which does not accept cliches. It does not accept preconceptions. It examines everything to see whether really we think it is true or not. This doesn't mean to say that we're a club of Pharisees who think we're better. On the contrary, I've stressed the humility of it because to really examine the human mind in depth is a humbling experience because it is tremendously complicated and frightfully interesting at the same time. So I think really what ties us together is a sense of mutual adventure uh, in fields which everybody sees but not everybody is willing to go in with an open mind and and really question whether certain things are true or not. We have to become aware of all the dangers. We have to try to meet them and, and overcome them. And uh, we have to educate people to the dangers. We have to educate people to rid themselves of the old reflexes of, uh, of fear and defense in, and liberate them to other thoughts. It is possible. But it has to begin in the schools, it has to begin in the earliest days of, of existence. I hate lies, and I hate when somebody is really cruel. When people are upset and when other people call other people names and annoy other people, it upsets me too. I'd like to see the world a nicer place, everyone be more pleasant to each other, to stop killing each other and to stop being so arrogant, like not thinking about other people but just themselves. In the next century, I want war to stop and all racism to be quit. Um, I think that what makes me really unhappy is people killing animals for no reason. I love the green.
in 1990, Hungary opened its doors to the rest of the world and this beautiful city of the bridges. This city which is a symbol of joining, of unity, of two halves coming together to form a whole, was able to be visited by people from all over the world. Budapest is a beautiful city, but as you see, it's also an old city. It's a city where the surroundings are traditional, almost timeless, but where the spirit, the creativity of individuals is constantly renewing. This is the spirit of the Club of Budapest. 1993 had here Erwin Laszlo Künstler, Intellektuelle and Wissenschaftler um sich versammelt und den Club of Budapest gegründet. Ziel des Club of Budapest ist es, einen neuen Standpunkt zu beziehen. Wir nennen es planetarisches Bewusstsein, aber es ist eigentlich ganz einfach. Es weist darauf hin, dass wir alle in einem Boot sitzen und gemeinsam an der Weiterentwicklung unserer Spezies arbeiten sollen. The Club of Budapest is a bridge building organization. It seeks to bring together the arts, the sciences, politics, philosophy, in a way where the creative process of bridge building between those different realms of human expression will have a positive outcome for humanity. The Club of Budapest also seeks to look at the process of bridge building between an individual and the rest of the world. The Club of Budapest itself is a model or microcosm showing the necessary will to get together and form a community. Its members come from various backgrounds, have different beliefs, attitudes and religions, and yet they have already brought to life the idea, the need to come together in mutual acknowledgement of and appreciation for their different roots. To take this huge step of reaching a consensus and make it work everywhere and for everybody, we need a new and truly modern way of thinking and feeling. This consciousness is already growing. We must facilitate its growth. I do not believe that the new consciousness can be legislated from above, can be dictated by the best meaning politicians or business people. It must grow, grow from the fertile soil of people's creativity. This is the task of the Club of Budapest. from its message, a message of warning, of commitment, but a message of hope. It has been drafted over the past year in communication and consultation, which I'm gratefully acknowledge, with all its distinguished signatories, beginning with His Holiness, whom I met in Madras the first time to review the text of this manifesto. We are not likely to grow into a peaceful and cooperative human family unless we become responsible social, economic, political and cultural actors. We, human beings, need more than food, water and shelter, more even than remunerated work, self-esteem, social acceptance. We also need something to live for, an ideal to achieve, a responsibility to accept. Why we need compassion? Because compassion bring us, bring individual, inner peace, happy life, better health. So, so it's a similar way. We see these how the uh, sense of caring, right? sense of caring, sense of global uh, con conscious or consciousness, also. yes, global consciousness, consciousness. <laughs> and I usually call sense of global responsibility. Democracy is freedom, but it's also the inalienable right to be as close to your neighbor as possible in everything you do. And this seems to be a negation of the whole possibilities of freedom, which is to use the language, which is to use music, which is to use the things around you in a positive way. 
and you don't have to get in the way of other people to do that. That's a purely passive thing, and you, but you absorb all this and it comes out in a feeling of enrichment. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> worldwide organization needs to have a coordinating center. Activities cannot be restricted to any geographic or national part of the world. The bridge building process, which is at the heart of the club's work, also includes the decisions that we've made to create safe spaces for leaders, whether it's in business or science or the arts or politics, religion, philosophy, to come together and bring their skills, their window of awareness on the world, which is a more global or planetary one, to bring that into a rich conversation with decision makers, people who are impacting every day of their working lives, the human future. There are many, many facilities here. And one of the things I would love to see is for us to have um, groups of people down here people who could really make a difference in the world, people who would come down here to talk, to feel that they're in a safe space, to just privately put their aims and ideals and dreams to each other. And in this way, we could make tremendous progress out of the glare of the modern spotlight. When we have our corporate conferences at Bewley, we will seek to find men and women of vision who are in the business world. Any of us that look at the world scene economically know that politics and business, whether we want them to or not, quite definitely go hand in hand in one way or another. And this isn't something that is exclusive or within a process where we're just looking for leaders. That's one part of the club's work. But to build bridges between those people who make decisions on behalf of others and those people that have no decision-making power at the moment. The task is certainly the biggest challenge in human history. After millennia of long and hard struggling for power, freedom and progress, now the most important revolution of all is at stake, the revolution of the human mind. I think that the power of the manifesto of the Club of Budapest comes from its message, a message of warning, of commitment, but also of hope. We can change the world, we, the human family, if we are prepared to change ourselves. The river behind us has been the artery which connected Bewley with the world for the past 700 years or more. In just the same way as the influence of Bewley spread over the world by river, so we hope that the message of the Club of Budapest uh, promoted here will spread over the seas and across national boundaries to heighten people's awareness of the need for a more ethical sense in the conduct of politics and business. should always be a club of Budapest or some similar organization to develop ideas and, 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 
pursue them. Governments need better direction and where to go. Where is the US government going? Where do they seek their inspiration? Industry is seeking ideas. You know, within the communications industry, we're looking for ideas. So wherever ideas are circulating, that's where we want to go to hear them. I'm hoping that this club will have the courage, because that's what it will take. The, you know that word force? I, I'm not really keen on the word force per se, because force is usually associated with war. But there's also a powerful force of love and a powerful force in that strength that we can absolutely begin to force governments into looking at the realities of their military budgets. I want to see the Club of Budapest do that. It has the brain power. It certainly has the heart. I just wanted to have the courage. Major problem is that the world's socioeconomic system is currently uh, firmly based on a consumption model. And the consumption model is precisely the wrong model to create the sustainable civilization that we need. Uh, we have to, in the face of a burgeoning population, learn to, uh, the most affluent, must learn to live more simply because they choose to. And the less affluent must be allowed to share more fully in the abundance of the planet. And that is a very major challenge for civilization right now. I have three advices. The first one, you must be a dreamer. The second one, you must be an optimist. And the third one, you must be an activist. felt that the aims of the club were very associated with my understanding and my feelings about Shakespeare and indeed the incredible circumstance that Shakespeare's Globe Theatre stands again at this threshold to the new century. If anyone speaks about Shakespeare they obviously speak more about themselves than the man and he, he created his art for that purpose so the mirror is not clouded but personally I feel your um, your dedication to the understanding and feeling of thoughts he would be completely in harmony with and also your attempts to show the areas and uh, give a great call that we are united more than we're divided this also is something that in his work he tried to do looking at many different cultures many different traditions and telling stories that brought them into the present day uniting and, and sharing the different wisdoms in all these traditions so I think he'd be a, a very happy member and he probably is a member anyway on a different plane Ha, ha, ha.